I grew up watching my father abuse my mother. I grew up seeing drugs in the house. Um, strangers coming in and out the house. Being touched as a child. I want my kids to have a better life than I did. And cots is the place for me to do that, to start over. They say you follow the same patterns that you were raised at, you know. The drug issue wasn't the, the problem. The father, their father was an alcoholic and he used drugs and he would abuse me. And the same thing with my father. I see the pattern, pattern continuing. If I stayed with their father, they would probably go through the same thing I'm going through. And I would kill myself if that ever happened, you know. If they don't deserve that pain, and they don't deserve it. They deserve happiness. It hurts. Talk about it. I've come a long way now, through COTS. I've learned to love, to deal with other people. <laughs> I've learned to love myself, to let other people in. I'm able to go out to, into the world and face my fears. My kids, Brittany ran to see a big difference in their mother. Now they're living a healthier life through COTS. And their mom is too. COTS is like my family, every single one of them. I love COTS, I love you. <laughs> Thank you for everything. My kids love you too. I've kind of been on my own since I was 12 years old. So I started running away. When I ran into the police, I'd always ask them to take me anywhere but home. And they usually would. But lived in camps along the river, under the D Street drawbridge. Anywhere I could find a place where it felt I could hide, nobody bothered me. I had no stability, no self-respect, no self-esteem, anything. I didn't really care if I lived or died. I just learned how to survive. And then one day, I found out about the pedal in the kitchen. And I wouldn't go there because I was too proud. Yeah, I finally did go there because I was hungry. And I cried when I got my first hot meal. Then I met somebody one day at the kitchen and I fell in love. I knew I was going to marry this certain girl. And I knew I couldn't do it if I didn't get off the streets and get off drugs. So I came to Mary Isaac Center and asked for help. And they gave me the hand up I needed. And then my, the person who I fell in love with came here a month later and we got married here in the dining room. She's going to college now. Now I'm a supervisor for the Coast Guard, for, out at the Coast Guard base for janitorial service. I've got money in the bank, I've got a car. I'm happily married for almost two years now. And if it weren't for the people here at Mary Isaac Center and in the Mary Isaac Center to give people like me an opportunity to do something with their life and clean up and find work and eat a roof over our heads, we'd probably all be dead or haven't touched any drugs, no alcohol. And that's the first time in 42 years. 43 years of using drugs. Now I don't use it at all. I don't even think about them. Now I'm still saving money for dope. I save money to buy a house. One day I will. I just thank God for God. Because this place is a miracle. Without it, I'd be dead. <clears throat> Sometimes it's hard to talk about, but they gave me something I never had before, and that's life. My mom died. All I remember is like my dad picking me up and him crying and me not knowing what's wrong. I found out about my dad's drug addiction because my stepmom showed us, showed it to us and said this is what it is and this is what your dad's doing. You think like one tragic thing could happen to a person in their life, not like multiple. I would try to talk to him about it and it was just shut down right there, it took away all his emotion. He couldn't understand what we were going through and he just wasn't alive. All I remember is like, dad gets mad, leave the house. That's pretty much what you do. Go down the street to a friend's house, stay there until things cool off. 
When, we, when me and my dad first came here, we were like, we, we were like, oh my God, we're in a homeless shelter. We never thought this was gonna happen to us. And we were really like bummed out like the first couple of nights. And then we started talking to people and we're like, oh, these are people just like us. They want to help us. Okay, I got it now. It's not like a homeless shelter. Like this is actually like a home where we can be and have people help us. That one little helping hand has affected me for the rest of my life and my dad's life. He thought he had to be on drugs. Like he thought that's the way his life was meant to be. And for him to just like have that helping hand, he just like feels so rejoiced about it. And, actually getting to live life how it's supposed to be like a normal person. I can change my path. Like, I can live a normal life. Cots has done all that. It's like they, they have taken the blindfold off. They have opened my horizon. I don't have tunnel vision anymore. <laughs> just all that happening just for coming here. It's like a new life for all of us. I'm feeling now that I have to do something back. Like, I am, like, overwhelmed with, like, all of this. It's like Cots actually saved my life from following the path that my dad has taken all his life, that my dad's father has taken all his life. It's like, you guys help the chain be broken.